reservoir has a water spread of 23 square kilometers and a capacity of 860 million cubic meters. This makes the Randinagala reservoir one of the largest in Sri Lanka. The construction work for the Randinigala hydroelectric power plant was executed by the joint venture Randinigala Civil Contractors, RCC for short. The partners in the joint venture were Dickerhoff and Widman, Wilfinger and Berger and Alfred Kuntz and Dickerhoff and Widman was the sponsor. The reservoir is situated roughly at the point where the Mahaweli River emerges from the mountains and enters the low-lying plains on the eastern side of Sri Lanka. There is a natural narrowing of the valley at this point, which meant that it was an obvious choice for this site of the dam. The name of the project was taken from Randinigala, the mountain which forms one side of this narrow section of the valley. Let us look at the main components of the hydroelectric power plant in turn. First of all, the actual dam, in this case, an embankment dam filled with compacted rock. Even if the water reached its highest imaginable level, the reservoir should never overtop the crest of the dam, which means that a spillway is essential. This consists of a weir with chutes. The structures for electricity generation have been sited on the other side of the valley. The water flows through the intake tower into the penstock and then passes below one side of the dam to reach the powerhouse. After the head has been worked off, the water flows back into the river below the powerhouse. Work in the Randinigala Valley started with the construction of accommodation for site workers. As soon as there was accommodation for the first group of workers, that is, workers recruited locally and experts sent out by the partners in the joint venture, further work on the camp went on simultaneously with work on the site installations. Halls were erected for the stores and workshops for the maintenance and repair of construction equipment. Then came a site power plant and facilities for providing and purifying drinking water and water for other uses. As soon as work on the site installations had progressed sufficiently to permit making a start on the first big construction operations, a bridge was constructed over the Mahaweli so that all the construction equipment could be transported to the site on the other bank regardless of the river's water level. The first step there was to build the site roads, an undertaking which in this steep, rough terrain was in part like building proper mountain roads. One important requirement in running a large-scale overseas building site, in addition